licensing, Microsoft, uh, Google. Do you uh, provide internet service? No. So actually, uh, we established in 2000 for the ICE people, Mongol universities. But uh, suddenly 2016, our ISP license is revoked by uh, local CRC. Okay. Then now we're mentioning only secondary schools, all public secondary schools, totally 700 full uh, country. And also it is service uh, provided by Mongolian government. Okay, what type of services then you are providing? To internet all service. Schools? So you are allowed to provide internet yeah, service yeah, to the we, school. We are transit uh, provider. Okay, you are IP transit provider. Yeah. You are allowed to provide internet services to the schools, but not to the universities. Yeah. Uh, but uh, chain network has to connect to the university and some institutes. The biggest uh, four universities connected us by the IBGP connection okay. currently. One more stakeholder is the Japan Mongolian Joint Hospital. So you are working as an intranet rather than internet. So, uh, in this case, uh, as an exchange point. That's internet only, exchange only distribute point. Uh, from the chain prefix okay. to them. Okay. So it's mainly REN connected network, only research and education network traffic. Yeah. And you have 2 Gbps connectivity, right? If I am not wrong. IBGP? No. Sorry? With external research and education network? What is your bandwidth? With 100, 10, 150 meg. 150 meg. Only 150 meg. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Wakas? Presentation is with you. Yeah, yes. I can I can show that. Yes. I have it. Yeah, next is your Mizaya. This is here. This one? Yeah. So it, it shows the total like revenue generation from where the revenue comes and then expenditure. So is the opening balance that now may be saving from the last year. That is the opening balance. That this year it was 615 million in Pakistani rupees. And then the total income and then I will say the expenditure. That is the total expenditure. The total volume is uh, 14 million dollars, which comes in Pakistani rupees to 4 billion rupees per year. That is the total volume of the expenditure. And uh, if you go to- Should I see that those figures over here? Um, Next slide, please. Because I cannot see. It's not given in that way, but you can still see something like here. Next, next, please. Yes, okay. The, 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 as you can see, the last one is 4.1 billion. Uh, that is uh, the. What is the uh, unit? No, no, I mean the unit in rupee or taka. Yeah, this is in rupees, which which comes to fourteen million dollars. Fourteen million yeah, divided by two eighty rupees, two eighty, then it comes to fourteen. Four billion comes to something around fourteen million. One four. Yeah, one four. Yeah. Okay. Next, please. So, what is that two hundred? Okay, that means the government grant is very minimal. Yeah, very minimal, yeah. But I would like to say here that the other is actually also coming from the government. Government is paying to the universities and the university is paying to no, us. No, that is fine. Okay, that, that is fine. In our case, it yeah. is all the same. Okay. Government so, is paying. But to the government uh, directly funding us with the Higher Education Commission for this connectivity, 200 million rupees that is given to us. Uh, to the HEC to, to run the whole because we have a staff as well. We have 
regional centers, four regional centers, Islamabad, total five, we have stopped there. Sell is everything included in this. Maintenance, SLAs, and this. So we, we have actually a, a kind of hybrid. But one small question. Okay. How do you collect your revenue? How do you collect your bill? Do you need to go to each university? Yeah. And you have to collect it from the university, right? Okay. Same goes with us. But here I would like to say you are learning from this. We, we used to have another model. We used to actually, the GC is equally paying money to the university. The government gives the whole money for the higher education to ETC. ETC is then paying to the university based on the student studying in science and social science and so on. Yeah, There's same is true for yeah. Bidiran also. Yeah. Then what, what used to be uh, two, three years, uh, five years ago, that we used to take the fund uh, money from the university budgets directly. And then it has been now changed. <laughs> yes, this was the case but in there, our case also. But this is, there are challenges in that. So we are thinking to go back to the old model. Deal with, deal with the service provider, yes. Exactly same case, but which modality you are now comfortable with? The they, earlier they, one or the, the new one, one? The early one was good because here you have to build the university, sometimes they don't pay, sometimes they delay, and then uh, there's a, there are but issues. So it's better as to, my experience yes. goes, it is easier to get the payment in earlier modality if you collect it centrally, but the distance yeah. The distance becomes larger yeah. between the client yeah. and the service provider. Uh -huh. They have the liberty to squeeze you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I enjoy that. I very much enjoy that. Because now I can go to the vice chancellor, I can talk to him. He can lodge his complaint directly to me. Before, there was no connectivity between me and my vice chancellor. So, although it is challenging for me, also for me it is challenging because I have to move to 40 universities. At least three to four universities I need to visit each and every month. So, it is challenging for me. Yes, they enjoy that empowerment. Definitely, they enjoy that. Can you go to come to you can see that the general administrative and operation cost that is the salaries and other expenditure of running fund. Okay, I'm more interested about the revenue side. Yeah, so that's the revenue side. Seventy one percent is your internet bandwidth and connectivity, right? Connectivity, and then it has all the Microsoft licenses, turn it in. Uh, what security services do you provide? What type of At security? Present, we have just uh, not, not too not much. Providing, okay. Just, just uh, we have given firewalls to university, about 150 universities we have given firewalls. We, we are trying to expand on it. We are, we are acquiring some team services and endpoint services, but that's in process. Okay. And then, Yeah, majorly we are, we are only turn it. Only turn it. We have given, we have made packages for it. 350 license and 100 license. It's different packages. Okay. Yeah. No, we, we have a combined license you with come the here. I will give you the floor. And then uh, that is. You are the host. Yeah, this is better. Yeah, this is better. Yeah, because it's very cheap. It's, it's almost fifty percent less. Yeah. This uh, planet li license, planet license is four thousand dollars per month for university in in the current model, which we are providing from central point. But in case of individual university, it costs eight thousand dollars. 
So it's a well more fifty percent less for the university. That is fine, but mm. how could you make or how could you convince Tarnitin to go through you rather than going directly to the so university? This is the main. The financial is the only thing that we are telling them. That they they can go. We don't have any problem with that. If they want to go individually to turn it, they have to pay more. But in our case, since we have we have taken license, good part turn it in as well. No, no, this is they not the problem it. in our country. Okay. This is not the problem from university side. Okay. Universities are coming to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Give yeah. me the license. Okay. You take yeah. the license and give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. But when I approach turn it in, yeah. they don't allow me. No, no. In our case, we have a agreement with the turn it in, and they are happy with it because they are not talking. They are talking to us, not to the 250 university. So it's good for them. It's easy. We pay to them, and they gave us license, something like thousand license, and we distributed it to, to the universities and made a very economical uh, package for the universities. Some of them are larger universities. So. Yeah, that is the HEC is doing. The HEC is the main body. It's everything is in, under the HEC umbrella. No, our question is: Did you compel Tarnitin to go through you, or yeah, yeah, Tarnitin yeah, 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 yeah. spontaneously yeah, did it no, by no, themselves? No, no, no. This is uh, we have an agreement with Tarnitin. The HEC, the HEC has got an agreement with Tarnitin for some license, and those licenses are given to the university. So it's something subletting we have taken. License and we subletting it to the universities, which so, is cheaper for them. Professor Alamgir, he is the head of my UGC in our country. So if he wants, he can do it, right? No, my approach is to provide this service to BDRN. BDRN will provide this service to the university rather than not UGC. Uh, UGC will provide the money then as a grants to the public university. Public university will decide whether they will. Purchase the tarnitin by themselves, or they'll go to the bidi them. Yeah. Our case, one is actually uh, running under the HEC. So anything done by one, it will go through the HEC. Okay. okay. No, like in our case, we have a structure for IT. Actually, is IT, the information yeah. technology at I, uh, HEC, that is managing everything. It's not only the one and those. There are many other things as well that is managed by the. Uh, information technology division inside the higher education commission so anything you do that that goes to the audit system of the higher education commission and it should have the blessing of the higher education commission commission is equally a board bog yeah. that has to agree to it then you can go and we went to the turn it and through the process and completing the whole process so actually is the cc that is uh, taking everything if you go to the universities, they will not know in many cases fun. They will know HEC, this is provided by HEC. And in turn it and we have also linked the research division. There's a research and R&D division in HEC. That is actually the owner of the turn it in. We are giving technical support to them that the software is running, the link is running, uh, the database is intact and so on. So we are giving the technical support and the same we did with for the smart classroom that is given to the NAHI, which is a national academy for higher education working under the HEC. We have, we have developed the smart classrooms, everything, and handed over to the NAHI, and they are actually managing. They are operating it. We are managing from the technical point of view. So we made a hybrid kind of system where the IT department is not doing everything. Whatever you develop, you give to the owner, and then they are using it. If there's any technical issue, somebody from our department goes in. So if there's any technical issue for turn it, then we go. But we have tested it for your just information that uh, there's another, there are another two softwares we are looking to that as well. One is the plagiarism check, another is essay writer. These are other two good quality uh, anti-plagiarism softwares. That is more cheaper as compared to the turn it in. So that is another we are looking. We have now obtained license from the plagiarism check, 500 license and those. So that is one services we can, uh, Actually, I discussed with some other operator okay. that is like copy leaks, but they don't check plagiarism for the uh, research papers. Okay. They only yeah. uh, check plagiarism for the research papers which are available in the public domain. But there, 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 are, there are pluses, there are negatives as well. There are pluses in case of plagiarism check. 
Okay, so I need to roll on, right? Okay. So this is anyway, the cost model is uh, quite uh, right now, it's quite safe. The fund is quite sustainable because the ECC bracing is there. The money is coming from the university through ECC again. And uh, we don't have an issue with this current model as well, but we, the previous model was good. We used to get everything at source. Yeah, definitely. So it was not going to the university. Now we are thinking, uh, I don't know if you can give us suggestions. We are thinking what a student-based model. Not like here is, is randomly like size and so on. The student, as I earlier was talking, like, you see there are many services in the world that is based like Blackboard, Moodles, and those are doing student-based services. Mm -hmm. Like if you have 100 students, you have to pay some, some amount per student per month. So we are coming to that. Right now, the total cost of the services, the IT services that we're providing it in two days, it is coming around 280 rupees per student per month. Whole billions, if you divide, we have 3.2 million students at this stage, registered in the higher education institution. So the 3.2, if we divide by 4 billion, that comes to 280 rupees per month. So that is $1 per month. And even the universities are ready to pay $2, even to some universities, even ready for $4 per, per month per student. That will be a very good package for those universities that are coming up, new university coming up. They just 500 students. And as I said, medical universities, specialized institutions like a nuclear physics institute, which has got just 1,000 students and so on. So in those cases, since this is a fix, they have to pay some fixed amount, which will not be then applicable to them. So we are coming for that kind of amount. Okay. And also we are taking it to private universities. So I think it will be most financially sustainable. Okay, we yeah. will discuss about the student model later because each and every country has different challenges. Yeah, yeah. If in our country, if I want to uh, get money from the students, there will be Definitely, there will be term. It will be again coming from the university in our case, not from the students. But the university will charge based on the number of students. Okay. Yeah. Then it is yeah. almost all the same. Yeah. Okay. Charampur, do you want to say something about the tariff model of Thailand? You don't charge anything. Yeah. My case is easy. <laughs> Your case is easy and you are very safe, right? Uh, no, actually, it's, uh, right now we still got the uh, funding from the government 100% and we did not charge any uh, fee from the university or from our members. However, uh, there are some extra services that uh, if they would like to have, they can also apply as a consortium to, you know, for, to, to the providers. Um, basically, uh, for the internet connectivity, as I mentioned, uh, they are 100% funded except that uh, some private university, which is not in the government <laughs> is still list. So uh, in that case, they can do, uh, we have option for them. You are providing services to how many universities and how many schools and colleges? Okay, for the university, uh, I... No, no, just give a uh, um, ballpark almost, figure. Almost 200, okay, 200. Uh, include uh, the research institutes, okay. And uh, for the schools, actually, uh, in the previous um, list that we have almost 10,000, but uh, that part we have moved uh, to the Ministry of uh, Education. So they are still connect to our backbone, but uh, in, in terms of the management. Yeah. So basically now we are focusing on the university and research institutes. Yep. And uh, how many schools? In, in the uh, 10,000 10, 10, that's a school, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that and connect. You have 40 GBPS internet bandwidth. How much is your internet? 40, uh, you mean the backbone or the backbone, internet? Backbone. Internet uh, backbone. In domestically, uh, part some some part of the backbone already 100 G, but uh, in the remote side, uh, some still multiple 10 G. For example, 20 Gs or depend on uh, the segments of the network. Okay. okay. And uh, for the international uh, internet connection, actually, if you look at um, the Asia Connect projects that we have only uh, two, um, 2G plus 1G, 
that's about 3G uh, with two different connection connection one to Hong Kong that is RAN connectivity yeah that's research, only RAN but for the research. commodities we have uh, 140 probably G 140 G yeah for the commodities so most of the traffic will go that way <laughs> Except that uh, for the research yeah, collaboration. That is the biggest. How much Parn has? 80. Commodity is 80. Okay, thank you. We have Myron. You want to say something? Uh, hello, I'm Mohamed from Myren. Basically, Myren is uh, fully funded by the ministry. Uh, all the budgets come from the ministry. We have uh, altogether 171 um, members. Uh, out of it, we have 23 uh, public universities. At this moment, we have not included the private universities. Uh, the remaining is polytechnics and community colleges. And our core, uh, I mean the backbone, the uh, the capacity is around uh, from ten to thirty uh, gig, and our upstream link, the commodity internet, is around uh, fifty gig, and also obviously the ten uh, link is ten gig. So, how do you finance your end? It's fully government uh, funded. It's fully uh, public funded. From okay, the government, so you, your end doesn't charge anything. Yes, we, the... we charge uh, uh, only the universities, we charge them a membership fee, membership yeah. fee, and that is a nominal amount, right? a very minimal amount. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, now let's move to the second part, which is mostly dealing with strategies. Last time we met in Colombo. Then Rene told me to uh, initiate a discussion on strategies to build my own strategy. He advised me to do that. And I tried my level best to do it. I don't know how perfect it is. I sent it to him, but he haven't sent his comment. So if we want to start as an introductory note, what are strategies? There are little bit difference between strategies and plans, probably you know it, but I started knowing it after Rene gave me the, gave me the assignment. So actually we start with goals, goals are outcomes, and then comes objectives. Ob objectives are measurable outcomes. You will get a 10% uh, profit increment each year. So something like that, you will increase suppose Myren has 171 members, so you will get 200 members next year. So if you can measure it, then it becomes objective. Then comes strategy. Strategy is long-term plan. So each end end should have its own strategy. I will delve into that. And based on your strategies, you will make your activity plan. So that is the hierarchy it follows, goals, objectives, strategies, and tactics. So we have followed four-step process to determine the strategy. First step is where are you right now? So if we see from business perspective, we have around 23% of SAM. SAM is the available number of service availability that you can expect. So if I have 100 institutes to get connected or 100 universities to get connected, I am now getting connected to 23 universities. So 77% is still there for me as an opportunity. Then who are the stakeholders for BDN? The universities, 
UGC and Ministry of Education. Why the universities are stakeholders? Because in our structure, the universities are the members of our board. So actually, the universities, they are the owners of BDRM. So the board is structured in a way that it's an 11 member trust body. And out of that 11 members, the UGC chairman is the chairperson. One of the UGC member is the vice chairperson. There are four vice chancellors from public university and two vice chancellors from private university. And they keep on changing on a round robin fashion. So each vice chancellor, they will be assigned for two years and then some other vice chancellor will replace him. So that is the modality it works, the uh, board works in Viriran. So we think that universities are the owners of Viriran. Probably learn also work in that way. The funding, as we have already mentioned, the OPEX and replacement CAPEX, it is self-funded. The expansion CAPEX, it is both self and also government funds the expansion of the network or expansion of the capacity. The organization number of employees around 70. Revenue, as you have seen that it is 2.8 million USD around. Net surplus is 1.03 million USD. Net surplus is after deducting the OPEX and replacement CAPEX. Services, we provide different types of services that is already mentioned in the previous session. And the services which are demanded from the member institutes, they are mainly they want to access to the research journals, which I was told from the very beginning while I joined the Enron community that this is not your domain. Research journal is a different domain. You will only provide the connectivity. But it is very difficult to sell the connectivity without such content. So I am facing that trouble. And that's why I am going ahead with providing the access to the research journals. Already, I have given access to 120 colleges with JSTOR 197 JSTOR journal. So I have started it. And I like to continue, but there is some challenge that I will mention. Then the plagiarism, it is highly demanded service. And also the faculty members, they want licensed application like STATA or SPSS or PRISM. They want the licensed applications to be served by BDRN from BDRN's platform and probably BDRN will get benefited and also the members will get benefited from the economy of scale, the way PARN is utilizing the eternity. So in that way, we can also utilize the licensed application. So that is our goal, that is our target. So about strengths, yeah, we have dedicated workforce who are committed to the organization. That strength. The structure of BDN, I have already mentioned that stakeholders are owners. We have positive annual cash flow. We have countrywide transmission backbone. That is a major benefit. And how we could do it? We could make an agreement with Power Grid Company of Bangladesh to take lease of optical fiber core countrywide and probably Brooklyn is doing the same and that is a 20 years lease with minimum amount of spending so it, it could only be done with the intervention of our honorable prime minister and being a member of asia connect i feel that it is from my heart i feel that it is a big strength for me not the connectivity the human network as I am involved with so many uh, strong uh, and conversant people. That is actually my strength. And we are doing many things, utilizing or leveraging that strength that I will 
explain later on. Satisfied members, as I was discussing with Parn, that we couldn't judge their satisfaction if we kept on continuing deducting money from the source. So now we are stepping into the university campuses and now we can judge their satisfaction or their dissatisfaction. But eventually we can say that, yes, they are satisfied. As our honorable chairperson has already mentioned that previously they used to go with many different ISPs. Now they only go with BDRN network and we are providing the quality. We are also maintaining the availability and yes, they want some empowerment, as Wakas has rightly mentioned. Yes, we don't mind if they feel empowered. About the weaknesses, the dependency of UGC on allocation of budget, that is same as HEC. So if UGC doesn't allocate the proper budget, then the public university cannot pay and it happens. It is not that 100% invoice we make, they are getting paid. But normally we try to convince EGC that they should allocate the budget, but there is always budget crisis and we have to endure with that. We have very few flagship services like killer applications probably each and then fills that. And we have higher dependency on revenues on from public universities. That is a problem, 90%. So if in any case we fail or UGC cannot allocate the right budget, the dependency we have on public universities, that is going to harm us. So we want to reduce that dependency and we have high dependency on delivery of internet services. So as you know, that internet services, that uh, internet services are being provided by the ISPs. So ISPs, they are our biggest competitor. And if we can earn revenue or if we can make other services, our cash cow services, then definitely we will be in better shape. The second point is what are the opportunities that we have? The opportunity is, I have mentioned many a time that the 160 university, the population that is the biggest mess in our country, but that is the biggest trend also in our country. The 160 universities, 4 million, probably it is more than 4 million, it is around 5 million students. New Zealand has probably 5 million population. And we have 5 million tertiary level students. This is not students, this is tertiary level students. Students going to universities and higher degree called honors and master's colleges. As I have mentioned that projects amounting to around 100 million USD is in the pipeline. The popularity of services already mentioned, access to research journals, licensed applications, plagiarism checker, MOOCs, services. If those are our opportunities, if we can provide them, definitely we can increase our package value or our service value. The threat we create as growth of research traffic is alarmingly slow. And that's why we cannot capitalize the RAN connectivity. The RAN connectivity, we have only one GBPS connectivity with NKN. That is almost 80% utilized, but most of the traffic is cash content traffic, actually. They, they are not the actual research traffic which we are talking about. Strong competition in the ISP market and there are some conflicts with UGC because UGC has its own digital library. So they are providing the access to research journals and licensed, not licensed applications, 
the access to research journal services. So that is a conflict. So we are only accessing or trying to get access to those research journals which UGC are not providing. Now the third step is where BDN wants to go. So this is our wildest dream. I don't know whether it will happen or not, but in five years time, we want to go our members by three times. At the moment, we have around 200 members. So revenue growth around 2.5 times. And the ideal funding model, as I have already mentioned, that OPEX, renewable capex, or replacement capex, that will be the bank's own fund. And new capex, maybe we can seek government fund for expansion. Distribution of revenue, public versus private universities. Now it is almost 70, almost it is 90-10. So we want to make it 70-30. And internet revenue is 70% and other services is 30%. So we want to make it 50-50. So we want to reduce our dependency on the internet service revenue. And we want to fit us with the services that our member institutes are looking for. And the organizational structure will grow as the grows grows based on requirements. So these are the first three steps I have mentioned. The first step is where the NREN is right now. The second step is to understand your strengths, weakness, what are the opportunities, what are the threats, and how you can leverage your strength to overcome your weaknesses and threats to grab your opportunities. So that is the way you should devise out your strategy and then come where you want to go so if you if you don't have any target if you don't have any objective i mean objective you have to have measurable target then you cannot fix your strategy or you won't understand whether your strategies are working or not so then on the strategy part will come but I want to leave it to the flow that how other engines are thinking about planning their strategies or framing their strategies. Learn, you want to check the lead? Learn is for lead, right? That's good, help. I need to share your. Oh, let me stop sharing. So my my presentation is not as detailed as Tauris as always, uh, but um, uh, the concepts are the same. I think. Um, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So, um, um, so I have framed this differently, but it's the same. It's mostly same as um, uh, what Tauri said. So I mean, our strengths. If you look at, uh, I mean, what I have said in in visionary leadership is uh, um, like we we have the right mindset, and especially you know Roshan being involved in uh, in, in uh, APAN and Asia Connect for a long time. Uh, we have the openness and the mindset and the attitude to actually um, to to um, uh, focus on on what uh, needs to be done um, and and to expand and and go forward uh, and you know with challenging times and all that. 
and um, what I mean by global and, and regional recognition is ex exactly what you mentioned by Asia Connect the, and the community, um, and also the increase and sustained collaborations that we have. So that's that's actually the 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 biggest strength that we have. Um, and on top of that, uh, I think uh, our fin financial independence. Uh, you know, we are not dependent on the government money, so we can at the moment we could do. Um, uh, things on our own, uh, but also that's, of course, that's the downside as well because we have to find our own money, um, and then um, the service por por portfolio once again has a competitive advantage over the the uh, the others, um, but also there's um, a lot to be done as we we'll, um, identify, and uh, once again same as yours, uh, we have a very competent and dedicated staff as you also saw. Um, in APAN 56 as well. So those, uh, I mean, it's a similar, very similar to uh, what you see. Um, maybe the rest uh, will be a bit different. Um, so the biggest, um, the weaknesses that we have had uh, uh, is the lack of uh, policymaker regulatory support um, over the last, I mean, we have been in the business for a long time, but um, uh, we have um, the, the changing, um, Poly, the changing um, policymakers in the government as well as the UGC and and, and universities, uh, it has been it has been a constant uh, um, you know um, uh, problem that to keep uh, 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 increasing the awareness and the interest from everybody. Um, so that uh, that is something that we we keep trying, but you know it's it's it's, it's a still a, a struggle. Um, and and now uh, the big one of the the, the biggest specific policymaker is your board members. Right? Board members are not a problem really. Um, board members are mostly they are like you know uh, people who understand. So they are actually like the, our kind of champions at the moment. Uh, as as um, John Chapman mentioned, like you know they are they are, they are our champions mostly. Uh, but um, they also struggle to do um, convince their. Uh, leaders in the universities uh, administration because they have many other parties to um, satisfy. Uh, so understanding from um, like so for example, you know, you know, if if you take my university, um, we like you know we'll have vice chancellors coming from many different uh, uh, sectors. Like you know, last few like have been medicine and dental and all that. You know, so for them to get to understand the importance as well as the the kind of uh, commitment and, and the, in, uh, the need uh, for the infrastructure and the services uh, is a struggle because, you know, they have, they have, they have many more um, things to worry about to do with funding, especially because of the issues that we have had, uh, the, the political instability uh, that in Sri Lanka we had, the, I mean, we basically went bankrupt last year. Right and and uh, and then we had the president ousted and all that. Um, so for the last f five, six, seven years, um, uh, the financial uh, stability of the country has been uh, very bad. Um, so that because of that, what regulatory support you are specifically looking for at this moment? I, I mean, um, starting from you know getting um, our um, the lease lines for the fiber and and. Uh, 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 and, and I mean, there are a lot. I mean, from starting from that one to to um, uh, say, for example, uh, even the funding. Your license doesn't allow you to take uh, lease of the fiber. Uh, so the thing is, like, it, it's at the moment, it's 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 controlled by uh, Sri Lanka Telecom, which is a, like a yeah. now almost private. Like, it has been a semi-government. Now it's they are going private, um, and and. For for the we need the government support or the policy support to for, for us to go for a long term uh, lease and all that. So that has been a pro problem in the sense we don't even we don't even get to the conversation yet because there has not been sufficient interest or awareness uh, from from the from starting from the UGC actually unfortunately. Um, so that's uh, something that we are working on and we are kind of very hopeful as I'll I'll mention later. Um, and um, and and also uh, because of the financial issues that we have had in the last few years, we also have like this increased bureaucracy about more scrutiny in the operations, including the procurement and all that, which is also kind of um, limiting our uh, work 
um, as we go forward, as we try to do now. I mean, compared to previous, uh, a few years ago, we have more bureaucracy now uh, because of the financial uh, uh, issues, because like, we, are, we are dealing with university money. So even though we are independent, it be that they they have like they are spending uh, the government uh, UGC money. So there's a lot of um, 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 scrutiny there. So that's that uh, is kind of the biggest issue that we have had up to now, which we hope it will change very soon. Um, and and of course, uh, common problems as um, the others, you know, lack of adequate technical and operation staff. I think which is a common issue that we have seen um, and um, service portfolio even though it's the competitive we have the competitive advantage it could be better as you also mentioned you know we could do a lot more uh, so we are looking at that uh, absence of data center and own fiber backbone this is the major issue um, like you know we we are trying to address at the moment uh, having our own fiber network we believe will you know bring down our costs um, and uh, of course give a lot of headaches as well, but, uh, but uh, definitely bring down our costs so that we can actually provide more uh, uh, for the for the money. Yeah, you that could feel that you are really a service provider. Exactly. That I, yeah. Think. Yeah. I don't know whether the business case will be better or not. With 2 million investment, I mean, can bring we, we are not looking at that from a, like, you know, because like we, we, we are, we are, we are not for profit, of course, obviously, yes, yes everybody. and, and also we are self finance So we are not really looking at the, the, I mean, apart from balancing the books and, and keeping, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, over, uh, I mean, uh, sufficient amount to, to invest. We are not really trying to like you know make profit out of it right so my personal yeah. observation is at least you should have the routing network mm -hmm. and if possible better to go with transmission network yeah. any end yeah. yeah yeah so probably you have the routing network right yes routers are yours so that's that are the those are the weaknesses that we see um Threats, as I said, uh, economic crisis. Uh, so, because less funding for everything, and there are also because of the less funding for the universities, they are looking at alternative solutions. I mean, um, I, I'll, I'll talk about it uh, in the in the opportunity. So, like, in, um, I mean, if you if you look at uh, our in Sri Lanka, like, learn we we are providing for all state universities uh, as well as other some other research institutes and other institutes outside that, but. Everybody is like so. If you take if you take the straight universities, we are fully covered. But so, but now what is happening is because of the less funding uh, for the universities, and and our co solutions cost a lot. And the private, like the private uh, uh, providers, will come and say, you know, we'll give you five G connections, and which is very very cheap compared to what we are providing and they don't understand the difference at the at the, the fine like the administration level so that is that is a, a threat at the moment so we are we are i mean we are we are keeping the uh, the services is because of the competitive advantage and the champions from the the board members um but it, it's a, it's a challenge at the moment as we go um and unfavorable lising and normally you visit each university and you try to make them aware of the difference between what NREN is doing and what an ISP can do. Because I have been to many universities and the vice chancellor, he like came up to me with all his grudges. But when I explained to him, okay, you are providing 1G, how much you are taking? Well, I'm taking this much. Oh, the, this is the offer, you see. What else he will provide? He was looking at his IT director. Oh, what else he will provide? Oh, no, sir, nothing else. Then I started explaining him that I will provide you the data center support, the data center facility. I have designed your campus network. I, if you want, I can implement your campus network. I am providing you the Zoom services. I am providing you the Edurom services. I am providing you the Edugain services. Then he literally threw out that offer into trash. Okay, Take it. he took that offer and threw it into his trash can. Oh, forget about this. Why you are 
showing all these trashes to me, how it comes to my table. So actually, if you can visit, of course you do it, but if you can more frequently visit, that's why I was telling him that definitely collecting money from each and every university is a curse, but it is also a blessing. Yeah. So yeah. So um. Uh, yeah. We are we are trying to do it uh, more um as we go forward uh, visit the universities and do the awareness and all that because you know. I mean, they keep changing, right? You know, the administration keep changing and everybody it will come It is easier for you because you are a faculty member. Your access is better than what my access is. Yeah, it's like there's pluses and pros and cons to that one. But yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah. So the, the other threads, you know, just quickly go over that. Um, so un, the, so that's, we are having more taxing and, and licensing uh, policies, uh, which are also um, having an effect. Um, uh, the, one of the biggest issues we have now and we are trying to address is that ab like the absence of comprehensive IT infrastructure, especially in the smaller and the newer universities. So uh, we are, they are unable to uh, get you, uh, use our services uh, effectively. So that's something that we want to uh, address. Um, and as I identified earlier, absence of research activities that utilize the NREN backbone. So this is like one of the key things that we provide, you know, with Asia Connect and all these things. But, you know, nobody's using it and, you know, they are not aware of how to use it. So that is one of the things that I think uh, we need more support um, to, to um, you know, so that people will really recognize the importance of uh, NREN connectivity. Uh, which we have not been able to. I think we have seen this. We saw this even in the, our NNA study. Uh, we 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 haven't been able to um, uh, increase it or you know make it better uh, in the last uh, in the last few years. So, but that's something that we really need to address because I mean not just to 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 convince of the importance, but actually make use of this to for for. I know. Uh, um, to uh, for the. Do you really think that there are potentials or latent demands for the research traffic? There are latent demands from the researchers. I mean, people, they don't. Uh, they are not aware of at the moment, right? And what can be done? You know, what, should, what could be done? There. No, I think. I mean, we have lack of awareness. I mean, we need some at least some pilot projects to show case. Uh, that this can be done if some if i mean we can't just go and say this is available and for them to come up with the project so i mean i am hoping that at least in the asia connect i don't know whether in the next phase what whether we can do it but to have some pilot project to for people to really start seeing yeah, in the, the in our next emerging and meeting can we ask someone to come and to present their cases actually if we can find it within ourselves, then we can go to the faculty members and or showcase those services. Actually, yeah. it was my plan yeah. that in the next and meeting, I will tell like Farn, they are doing good with the contents and services. They can come up and they can guide us how we can go with plagiarism oh, services yeah. or oh, Microsoft licensing. I communicated in my country with Microsoft, but they don't want to give us other than anything other than the reseller account. So I want to actually go further beyond that reseller account still. Yeah. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, difficulty in attracting and retaining best talent because of the, the, the salaries that we provide. So that those are the threats uh, just to um, I, I mean, um, and to look at the opportunities I have at last, because um, uh, I mean, we now see this increased demand for online and blended learning, uh, digital transformation, AI in higher education, uh, and I mean, there's a there's a huge demand and 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 uh, up on the, on this one. And, and we also see this increased and better government initiatives at the moment. We have the, the presidential AI task force and uh, funding allocated from the last budget. Uh, uh, Roshan is also part of that task force. Um, and we have this from the technology ministry. We have, we have a, a, a initiative called DGCon. We are you know, looking at the digital transformation of the, the government and the economy. Um, so there's a lot of interest and activity work by the president as well as the ministers at the moment so we are hoping that with 
that push, we should be able to convince and, and get more support uh, from the government. We are working on it at the moment. Um, uh, and, and also, um, one of the things that we have realized and, and kind of actively taking part in that we have realized that, you know, the higher education sector is actually lacks a champion. So like, you know, there have been um, distributed funding, disconnected work and all that. As nobody's, take, nobody's taking leadership in, in, in actually driving the, for this uh, um, um, AI and- So how it, it has become an opportunity? Because, I mean, if we, we want to be the leader and then take everybody, right? So we just like, you know, I mean, just not, I mean, we have been staying in the background, providing the services. Um, so what we have realized is that, you know, we, we can actually be the, the leader to, to provide uh, this one. I mean, I think we have a, a bit of an advantage because Roshan and I, we are all also both academics as well as, you know, working on this one. So we are working from both fronts um doing like you know combining maybe the the, the boundaries little bird blurred there uh, but we are we are working on many initiatives from both sides from the academic perspective as well as the the learn and and embryonic perspective and and we, we, i mean for us it's things are easy it should be easy because like you know we are a small country it's very accessible terrain we don't have to worry about like you know maybe like say drew crane as like you know or or in rain uh, we are like you know you have difficult terrain to cover uh, we have fully covered backbone and then availability of dark fibers around around the country. So uh, doing this is not a problem at the moment. Uh, uh, getting it done would be not be a big problem if we have the policy support and the funding. So uh, we are hopeful that we can go. Um, so just to finish, uh, you know, what we want to do is, you know, borrowing from uh, um, uh, um, Rian's. So digital liquidity, we have been uh, working on this. Actually, we were calling this equity for all, but uh, digital liquidity is something that we are really looking at because like there's a lot more happening in Colombo and, and, and major universities, but not much in the other universities. So we want to ensure digital equity. We are trying to do more for less, like, you know, give more and more uh, so that, you know, uh, uh, and, and by doing that uh, to, to reimagine research and education in Sri Lanka, including using, um, Asia connect connectivity and all those things, right? So the way forward, what we are really looking at is becoming a leader and, and trying to enforce these things and provide this uh, AI and digital uh, transformation in education. Uh, by doing that, we, we are hoping that uh, we, um, our the importance and the, and, the, and the collaborations will also improve and, and we should actually drive it towards, you know, uh, uh, one place rather than uh, distributed uh, funding everywhere, which is, has been happening. And we don't see, uh, uh, like, you know, the world, so the things like, you know, the World Bank funding, or ADB funding has been distributed to all the universities and even faculties and departments. So they have been spending that on very, very different things. I mean, even IT and all that, they are spending in many different ways. And that has, the it's not a um, converged or a synergist, um, uh, solution so we are we are hoping that we can actually you know take control of uh, of this you know how how uh, we, we focus our uh, progress you want uh, the funding to be pushed through long. not I mean not necessarily but we can control the narrative I mean we don't say like you know give us the money and we'll give it like I mean not not really that but you know at least if you can control the narrative at how it happens I mean whether it goes to universities and they they use it for like the same purpose same direction that's all we want we don't let's we won't go and say give us the money I mean I mean that that's not going to work but but to to ensure so don't that you think that the efficiency of utilization will be better yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> because a faculty member he might not be that much efficient in utilizing the fund for building an yeah, yeah so i mean to, we have to come up with the model how it is done but i mean we but we won't just get, go and say just give us all the money and we'll provide it i mean that's i mean people will you know clamor right you know they will come and say you know no we don't need money but if we provide the services and they can spend the money that they get they will be happy so we will we will have to work out the modalities of that happening so you know we are again we are trying to reduce cost and provide more we are also introducing paid services to to you know, increase our revenue and do more like you know um, right 
Um, and also we are we are looking at uh, work. I mean, we, we are introducing something called Learn Bridge for external grant and projects where we are trying to attract more grants and um, work with you know external grants for different things. Uh, so um, that's our strategic plan going forward. Okay. Thank you very much for detailing your strategies. And may I ask Pan to come forward? Thank you very much. Uh, we did not make any presentation the way you, no, no you did in Prince uh, uh, from Sri Lanka. But uh, we, we know what is our strength is actually one is very easy for us to operate with one because it is under ETC. And ETC is a trusted body in Pakistan that is the only regulatory authority. And it has got its own uh, charter that is autonomous body and is equivalent to minister, ministry. It is a ministry of higher education in other words. The higher education chairperson is equivalent to a federal minister. He has got a plague on his car as well. So that, is, so that makes it easier for us. And then uh, people in Pakistan, they have trust for ETC. For the last 20 years, ETC operated. So that is our strength that we can use ETC umbrella to go to universities and others. And we have concern. There are a lot of concern. And one is actually, uh, we, we don't call it weaknesses, but it's concern. One is a huge infrastructure. And that is a long-term commitment, how we will maintain them. Because we, I mentioned before as well, the fiber optics, 6,000 kilometers, and then a number of hubs and so on. A huge infrastructure, access points, as mentioned by Pawad, in all universities, the smart classrooms and everything. How do you do the maintenance of this? Yeah, that, that is the SLA, that is the lease agreement. There's a, there's a one-time cost. We laid down the fiber optics to a private company. So you outsource it? Yeah, outsource it. And then they are maintaining it. That costs us something 300. And the performance is satisfactory. Oh, very, very good. Performance very good. Yeah. So they have got the NOC as well, and this is 24-7 uh, availability of the call center and so on. Uh, we also, this is one thing, the huge infrastructure, there's a long-term commitment. We also cope with the rapid changes in the technology. Being a third world country, we do not have our own technologies. All of these technologies are, are actually uh, purchased from the vendors. So there's a lot of changes in the technology to cope with that and the advancement. That is one thing. So we have now we are coming to a solution that that as well. And the maintenance and upgradation and then high cost at this stage of the equipment one time and then there are, and then we have this uh, uh, heterogeneous environment of the higher education uh, sector in Pakistan. They split was uh, something like 200, 500, uh, 2,500 kilometers wide, and that is another issue for us. And there's a lot of variety. Some of them are uh, big cities like Karachi, and then we have far northern areas in the southern area. There were small towns we have to reach to there because the vision is to, to, to give connectivity to each and every student. So a number of projects are coming on the government there, but we are not the only people working on this. There's another college ministry of IT that is also working on the connectivity. We have got uh, uh, national ICT r and funds. That is a government body again. And there's many other uh, bodies working on this. Now, what is actually the way forward in our case? We are thinking do about a model. Any, do you have any retention problem? Because you are saying that being a government organization is your strength. Yeah. But do you feel it as an as a weakness also? Well, the, the, the policy, yeah, the rigidity, the, you, the retention. Yeah, you are quite right, and this is a very good point. And that is why we are coming to a solution like this. We are thinking maybe more a similar model what I hear from you, the Bangladesh model. We we are thinking to shift some of these operations to a private company. We are building a private company which will run under the GC, but that will be total independent body with its own CEO, rules and regulations. Yeah, yes. Rules regulation and a kind of say it. There's and another, the salary structure. Yeah, the salary structure. Because like uh, in, in case of my example, like I am working with the HEC on contract basis and they have created special uh, groups. They call them P1 in Pakistan. So those, those are high 
like paid, but I'm not that much high paid. You don't ask me okay, to give so money. Go ahead with your strategy. <laughs> okay, the strategy. So we make this. Uh, How we are going we, to move yeah, forward? To make this company a private company, shift some of the operation to that company, and that company is still owned by HCC, but that is independent. And also we are making some of the universities, they are high, very good universities. Some of the universities in Pakistan, they have got high tech people, high tech technology and so on. So we are shifting some of the passion to the universities okay. as well. So that, that is the strategy we are using okay. for the future purpose. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Salampal, you want to say something? You don't have any challenge. Well, we got challenges. <laughs> you mean that, um, uh, our do you have any strategy to move forward? Do you have any? Well, yeah. Do you feel any threat? Yes. <laughs> yeah, from the I, government? Yeah, actually, it's, uh, even we got support from the government, uh, but we still uh, have some challenges. And, uh, you know, for the government funding, we could not increase <laughs> the funding. Basically, just maintain, but the, the expense increase. Uh, every year, the uh, receive funding uh, only for the maintenance and some operations. So uh, our how much your operational expenses? Uh, how much budget do you ask from the government to yeah. allocate? For last year, we got around uh, one thousand four hundred, uh, one thousand five hundred million baht. Million baht. Baht. That means. Um, 30 60 million so uh, so around uh 400 to up 500 uh, that's uh, for the uh, investment like uh, new equipment and those things and around 1000 uh that's for uh operation i think it is not those. sufficient enough to maintain the fiber optic network to 10000 right, schools yeah that's uh, very expensive that's why the, the maintenance cost is a challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In your economy, the overhead is also high. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So we are also thinking the, uh, the model also, that's why uh, we are trying to, to see what others, and then also solving their challenge or problem. And we will have to move to the next phase as well. Even we still want the government to support, but we still have to Come up with the strategy to rely on uh, some, you know. Uh, Are you planning model. any horizontal exp expansion of your network? Or? Uh, not at the moment. Not because uh, we already cover most of the state university and we still okay. accept that uh, some new organization or some private university, if they would like to join, we have to come up with the models. How can we join it? Our, and the, you are fine with your core network and everything. Uh, the core network, yeah, we just need uh, only the, the replacement, replacement and maintenance. Okay. Rajan, want to say something? Yes, there is, there is a lot of things to say. Mm, yeah, but, uh, but there is the time, time is running out. Okay. Minutes. Uh, so uh, yeah, the strength is uh. Uh, the community is uh, actually, uh, yeah, as I already highlighted, that uh, we have got a very uh, uh, strong relationship with ISPs and uh, ICT communities. So uh, that is uh, why we are able to uh, 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 provide uh, these R&D connections to uh, universities without the direct funding from the government uh, as well. So. And the another is like some of the uh, our board members are from the medical background, so that is also access to you know ha have uh, connections with medical institutions. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, obviously our staffs uh, uh, they are very dedicated. Even they don't care uh, how much they earn at the end of the four months as well, right? So for so far now, so that is also the good things, but uh, yeah. Uh, and the uh, other is uh, in terms of- uh, Rajan, one yeah. specific question. Do you think that you are not providing internet services like other entrants, many of the entrants, 
also many of the engines are not providing that. Do you think that <clears throat> that is a big obstacle for you in generating the cash cow revenue? Uh, not exactly. Yeah, okay. actually, uh, our leadership uh, from the very beginning, so they they focus on uh, the utilizations of the research and education networks. Actually, uh, we initially actually our core tax is to support the research and education communities. Uh, and from that part as well, and the another we part started actually with that motto in mind, but eventually we shifted, right? So you don't feel that yeah, so far, it would have so been far. better. It would have been better yeah. if you had the internet service provider licenses, because all the entrants I spoke with, everybody's yeah. cash cow service is internet Engine. service. Yeah, you're right. But so far, actually, we're still not thinking about that. Uh, uh, maybe the, because we are the neutral point for all the internet service providers. So that might be that I think we can use that as an asset. Because, for example, uh, if, you, if you talk about the circuit, circuit cost or backbone cost throughout the countries, because uh, uh, most ISP, they have their backbone costs and they provide the very special uh, prices for Advent. So even if we pull those things, then that will be very expensive for us. So I think uh, so far when we maintain this neutrality, uh, I think uh, there will not be any issues. Uh, so yeah, uh, for, I'm not sure about the very long future, but- uh, Okay, I will talk to you separately and take okay. your views okay and uh, the order is like uh, uh, opportunities obviously uh, there is a growing interest for uh, research related uh, activities uh, and actually the member institutions are uh, started to request for various services so that is uh, the very uh, important opportunity for us so that we, we can uh, brought a large number of uh, institutions and uh, human of uh, minds in this aspects as well and yeah so far we didn't have any competitors actually we are not providing the internet services so the, they consider that uh and really just for the research and education sectors and purely for as a like okay, tell me something about it, your strategy how you want to move forward okay uh yes we're trying to connect very all short the, uh, yeah trying to connect all the universities so there are Google uh, Central Universities, and we're able to connect eight uh, of the universities recently. So actually, uh, okay. one of the horizontal expansion is one of your strategy. All right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the another is the services. Obviously, the vertical um, we need to have the more more services uh, that will help for the sustaining as well. And uh, yeah, obviously the partnerships with the global communities so that is also our top priority strategies as well. And um, yeah, I think you want the Asia Connect to continue yeah, obviously. without any additional payment, right? Yeah, that should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me tell in brief what is what are the strategies from for BDRN. I will take two to three more minutes because we don't have enough time. We want to strengthen our members network, as we mentioned that, as I mentioned, that I learned it from Pan. they invest in the campus network. Sometimes we invest with the commitment that they will repay, but sometimes it is self-investment, okay? If we find a business case that if we invest, the bandwidth will increase and subsequently there will be higher payment. And if in one year or two years time, I can get the investment back, then I do it. And another issue is to, that is our weakness. I have already mentioned that 89% of revenue is coming from public university. That's why we are trying to extend our network to other institutes like private universities, colleges, polytechnic institutes. We have already connected 120 colleges and our target is to connect 2000 colleges. And we are framing different product like Normally, private universities, they use daytime bandwidth. So we are preparing 
special packages for them that they will use only daytime traffic because as because the daytime traffic is uh, the off peak traffic for the IP transit service provider, we get it at cheaper cost. We want to place it properly and we want to make the price competitive. And as I mentioned, it is our weakness that internet revenue is taking the major share and our target is to make it 50-50. So we are trying to diversify our cash generating services, making the widely used services as cash cow services and gradually converting the flagship and widely used services as cash cow services. And we want to make sure that the revenue we are generating from public universities that remains intact. That's why we are constantly pursuing to increase the value of the packages. We put it as a bundle. So always we are trying to increase the value by strengthening the flagship services, adding more applications and licenses with that bun in that bundle and keep on providing the CSR services like designing their campus network or giving the campus network, uh, implementing the campus network free of cost. And also we want increased member satisfaction by increasing our availability. And we are providing last mile redundancy, also the third party backup. And there are some other strategies from BDN that enhancing regional co collaboration that is a major target for us as each and every NREN was mentioning and also the minimizing the gender divide because we have very few female employees. So we are going ahead with changing, changing our service rules so that we can appoint more females in administration, finance and marketing because appointing women as female engineers in North and for maintenance, that is a challenge for our country. So we are thinking that in administration, finance and marketing, we shall have more female participation. So that's all. I couldn't give floor to many of the representatives. So that's why I'm sorry, because we are running out of time. So we have a signing agreement for your information. We have formed South and East Asian countries research and education network. It is open to all. You can participate. It is mostly for strategic and mutual collaboration. We have started with Zoom services. So we have dealt with Zoom directly and we have brought a, bought a bundle package with very cheap rate. At the moment, we are sharing between four NRENs. We, LARN, Dukren, and NREN. I, it, it's an open offer. I have already offered Chalaram Paul of Thailand. Also, I spoke to Navid during the Seoul visit. If you are interested, you can join and you can, I cannot disclose the price at this moment because there is an NDA, but it is very cheap. It is far, far lower than the market rate. So if you are really interested, you can join, but definitely our collaboration will not stop here. It will keep on continuing. So the other day, Roshan was mentioning that he wants to provide plagiarism services through Sikran. So if he can provide, I will be, place to join. Also, if you can join and if you can come up with, suppose Microsoft services, we will be pleased, very much pleased. Okay, so Roshan, we have to share our copy of the agreement with Pan, they are interested. Okay. It is not necessarily that you have to take it right now, but if you are there in the collaboration, then we can move forward because all the content related problem, we should not expect that Asia Connect will resolve it because they have very, very limited budget. So it is not possible. We have to contribute to get our services. But if we get, can enjoy a better economy of scale, if we can make 
it cheaper for ourselves. That will be beneficial. And that is the biggest beauty of joining in, uh, in this research and education network, that I believe. Okay, all the like-minded people, we are here with the same challenges and we can overcome with each other's help, with helping each other. So that is my point and that is an open offer. So if you want to join, you can join. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. So we will proceed with the signing ceremony now. David, you want to say something? Thank you. Anyone from the audience? Okay, so we are wrapping up the e and -N session. Now the signing ceremony.